Hey guys, it's Travis, the Pagan Scholar, and this is actually going to be a video response to Nico from Scarlet Moon Magic. He brought up an excellent uh, video the other day. Before I get into that though, I really apologize about the lighting, about the quality of this video. I am flying solo right now, Marshall is uh, away elsewhere, and so I'm just using my iPhone and just whatever lighting I have, and so my apologies. Anyways, so he brought up this really excellent topic of how people uh, engage with deity whenever they are trying to do a spell, whenever they're trying to make something happen. I loved the way that he put it. It was, you know, you can't just grind up a goddess and put her in your, in your spell as if she's just like another herb or a candle or something like that. I think that that logic, that sort of like picking and choosing whichever goddess is around or whichever god is around that suits your purpose, is sort of a very Wiccan sentiment. Um, not to bash on Wiccans at all, I mean basically I practice it's just basically Wicca with a very strong Hellenic bent to it. Um, I think that Wicca and its sort of bumper sticker is, you know, all gods are one god, all goddesses are one goddess. This is a uh, kind of problematic because then whenever you are doing a spell or you're doing a working or something like that, you can use the logic, well, if all goddesses are the same goddess, then who the fuck cares whichever goddess I choose. I don't think they approach it with that amount of irreverence, However, it's sort of just... Anyways, I also think that that logic is problematic in that you can take it to the extreme of... I think a lot of pagans would be very uncomfortable if they had to fess up and say that Pan and Yahweh are the same thing. I mean, I just don't know a lot of pagans who would be comfortable saying that. I actually do believe that there are different separate personalities, and yes, I mean, like, this is a very theological conversation, you know, what is the supreme divine mystery, what is uh, the primordial consciousness, what is the divine consciousness from which we all come from, with, from which all gods spring from, I get that. That's a conversation for another time. However, in dealing with respect to other deities and treating them as separate identities, I think that it's really important that we don't just pick and choose whichever one is you know, convenient for whatever working you're trying to do, and to actually develop a rapport with them. So the way that I look at developing a rapport with deity, developing a relationship with deity, is kind of how I view my relationship with my neighbors. So my neighbor over here, he's excellent, he's great, we've got this great relationship going. If I need to borrow like his lawnmower, I just ask him and he's like, sure, totally, absolutely, man. And you know what, I'll send him a Christmas card or I'll bake him cookies or something like that. It works out, we've got a great relationship going, we're good. My neighbor over there, however, I don't know him as well. And so if I were to ask him for a favor, it's kind of like, well, I guess so. I mean, I live next to you, so you're not gonna like run away with it. I know where you live, but there's still, he has like the social right to say no because he doesn't know me that well and we don't have that well of a relationship. My neighbors across the street, I don't know them. They don't know me. They aren't going to loan me jack shit. Maybe if my house was burning down, I could go and ask them for help. But other than that, they don't know me from the Girl Scouts who tried to get them to buy their cookies. So. That's kind of how I approach viewing deity with cultivating an essence of familiarity, of being able to call on deity without it being just a random picking and choosing like, oh yeah, cool, check it out. So because I'm not going to go to my across the street neighbors when I need something done, when I could just go to my next door neighbor who is much more likely and inclined to do that. How did that relationship come to be? Well, I said hello to him. He says hello to me. We have bonded over conversations. You know, I'll bum him a cigarette or he'll notice that my lawn needs trimming just along the edges and he like just does it kind of without asking. He's a great neighbor and I am appreciative of him and we get along. You can do the same thing with deity. So if you're trying to cultivate a relationship with deity, it kind of follows the same thing. Let's say I wanted to develop a relationship with Kuan Yin. Um, she is a Chinese goddess of mercy. She's an amazing lady. You should really go check her out. So I would start to learn her symbols. I would start to learn the things that she harmonizes with, and I would start to incorporate them into my life. And whenever I see one of her symbols out in the world, I would notice it and I would comment on it, just as if I had seen my neighbor on the street. You know, I, in, in a very metaphysical pagan sort of way, I can be like, oh, hey, Kwan Yin, what's up? Or I could actually learn how to say that in Chinese, which she might actually appreciate even more. So I just thought this was a fun, interesting way of uh, approaching the topic. I hope that I didn't totally 
bastardize your idea, Nico, but I just wanted to contribute, and I hope that everybody enjoyed this video. Thanks so much, merry meet, merry part, and merry meet again.